Welcome back. Uh, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel, and in this video, you will focus on shadowing models. Uh, let me remind you of where we are in terms of plan. Uh, we have covered a few topics, and now we're focusing on shadowing, and we'll combine path loss with shadowing. So we are done with path loss. Now it's time to include shadowing and combine it with path loss. Shadowing. Okay, so what is meant by shadowing? When the transmitter and receiver are shadowed, it means our, the, the receiver is in the shadow of an obstacle. So we need to model this attenuation as a result of this obstruction. The model for the obstruction between the transmitter and receiver, as you might guess, is a random, because if it's indoor or outdoor, you don't know the number of obstructions and the type of obstructions, building, furniture, and what material is made of. So the randomness come from the number of obstructions and the type of obstruction. Shadowing will be added to the model for the received power. We have transmitted power and then we have path loss and then we have the shadowing effect. So the path loss was modeled in a deterministic fashion, but the shadowing is a random issue. So complex, it's a complex in practice. And once things get complicated, we have to simplify them. So we're going to use simplified model. <clears throat> the shadowing uh, introduced large scale variation because if you're going through a building, then the same building will remain for some time. So uh, there is a this is called large scale variation because it does not change uh, within few dimensions, but uh, relative to the wavelength. But of course, uh, it, it takes a while to go from one building to another or one, one furniture to another. So large scale variation around the path loss, as we're going to see in the next slide. And this randomness will be represented uh, based on experiments. So researchers did a lot of lots of experiments where we have transmitter, receiver, they move around and they measure the received power. And of course, it's random, so they, they do lots of experiments. And they found out that in many cases, we can represent the shadowing using log normal distribution. Here is how the log normal distribution look like. Always there is a loss. So we have, okay, uh, we have kind of positive loss and it's concentrated around certain value, but it could be large or small. So it follows a log normal distribution. This is how the log normal distribution looks like. We call it log normal because if you represent the, the shadow in dB, then that's that's to say psi is the shadow so psi in db is going to be 10 log base 10 of the shadow and that is going to follow uh, log normal uh, normal distribution that's the, the db scale will be normal the normal scale will be log normal and this is why we call it log normal because if you take the db if you took the logarithm it becomes normal so the average value is mu psi and the, the variance is sigma squared of psi. So it's normal in the dB scale. If we are going to account to the average in the path loss, since the average obstacle will be included in the path loss, so we can say that the shadowing in dB will be normally distributed with zero mean and, and um, variance of sigma squared of psi. Okay, that's, that's to say that the average would be already accounted for in the path loss. So uh, how much is this variance? It depends from one environment to another. The, if we have lots of obstacles in terms of numbers and types, then variance would become larger because it changes, uh, it's expected to be different. Uh, empirically using experiments and measurements, people found out that the standard deviation is usually between four and 12. The standard deviation of the, of the shadowing uh, NDB is going to be between 4 and 12. That, that depends on the, on the environment of interest. Now, there are other works in, in, in shadowing. This is just the distribution, the BDF. But if you want to, be, to have more details about the correlation, so if we have shadowing here, it's not going to be completely random in the next distance after D distance, because usually shadowing is a function of obstacles. So there'll be some correlation. So there are some work like Good months on uh, shadowing correlation, and they find out that a distance of 50 to 100, there, there must be some correlation. This is a measure of correlation, the expected value of the product. This is called correlation, similarity, and it has a certain model. So we can assume that things to be independent, uncorrelated, 
but that's a very simple assumption, it would be more accurate to assume that there is correlation between them. And the correlation is captured by the maximum correlation distance, which is the distance after which the, the two um, uh, losses due to, due to shadowing will be unrelated. So this slide kind of summarizes the major issues or modeling of shadowing. If you want to know more about some obstacles and, and what is the effect, the deterministic effect of, of, um, of walls and obstructions, I advise you to read my work uh, in ultrawide band, ultrawide band through wall propagation. You can search this. Uh, it's one of my uh, highly cited papers. In the coming slides, we'll talk more about shadowing. So now, uh, in this slide, we combine shadowing and multipath and on path uh, path loss effect. So we mentioned that path loss is deterministic. All you need to find is k. If you want to model a line, you need the point and the slope. So k and gamma will give you the behavior uh, as function of distance when it comes to path loss. But then shadowing will be on top of this, will be variation on top of this. So this will capture the mean, and this is going to capture the variation. How much is the variation depends on uh, the shadowing. So the linear model for the shadowing, assume that psi is log normal, as we mentioned. So the way we're going to represent it is that the received signal that we had before, power received relative to PT, will be scaled by psi. This is expected to be less than one. So the received power will be affected negatively by shadowing. In the dB scale, you will find out that the received signal relative to the power transmitted will be 10 log base 10k. That's this factor. And then we need to subtract psi and dB. I remember that if you want to model this using MATLAB, these are deterministic values, but then you will generate a random, normally distributed random Gaussian variable, and it's going to follow the following uh, value. So it depends on where you are, and we'll, we'll generate, uh, uh, we'll generate um, the shadowing effect. So this is, if you want to call this K and DB. So when we already account for uh, shadowing in the path loss in gamma, so this is going to be, mu is going to be zero because the average shadowing is already incorporated in, in the path loss model. We're just looking for the variation across that. Otherwise, if we don't do this, then of course this is going to be a positive quantity. Now, um, let's look at this example in terms of combined path loss and shadowing. The received power in this example at 100 meters is due to path loss is minus 110 dB. Okay, that is minus 110 dB. That's we started with 0 dBm, that's 1 milliwatt. And then we have uh, uh, path loss is, is, is minus 110 dB. It's given that the shadowing standard deviation is 3.65. So it means that if you want to get the loss, at at at, uh, at that distance, of course, you need you'll get a random number. The random number follows this PDF. So this is normal distribution in the dB scale. You can see here that the center value is due to path loss, which is 110 dBm. Now we need to pick a number according to distribution. So most of the numbers, most of the power will be around this, but it could be minus 100. It could be minus 125 with much less probability. So this is more probable, and here we, we have less probability to be more or less, and it's going to be a variation around this. The standard deviation will determine the width of this PDF. If you want to represent the same, so this is, i just like to emphasize that it, the average value here comes from the path loss. For the log, for the linear scale, okay, it will look like this. If you're not using dB, then we get this, um, average and then it could be much less or it could be more with much less probability so this is the bdf uh, the second example here is about shadowing variance uh, if we have to find sigma rather than uh, use sigma so we did some experiment with the following distance of the transmitter and this is the received power if you sketch the following and we have done this before. I mean, if uh, for similar values, we have done a previous example when we discussed path loss. You can visit that video. Um, we found out that if we plot all uh, all the points, 
we can fit a line and this line will have k given by the following and gamma would be 3.71 the path loss exponent 3.71 so it says here find for the same numbers find the shadowing variance around the path loss to find the follow the variance by definition the variance is uh, you take the values minus the model and then square them okay that's the measured value minus the expected value squared expected value of x minus x hat squared and we take the mean of this this is mean squared value we are summing over five numbers because in the questions we are given in the question we are given five points and we take we divide by one over five to take the average the mean so m is the measurement the measured value and here the value that comes from the model that we had before so uh, if you do this if you substitute all the values in db you'll find out that the variance is 13.29 and hence the standard deviation is the square root of this and that's equal to 3.65 in db we did everything here in the db scale if you want to look at how things uh, uh, work we just plotted these values so the red star uh, the, the blue stars are nothing but a direct plot of scattered points here and then we find the best fit mean in the minimum in the minimum mean squared error which is uh, we found k and gamma the, uh, the point of intersection and the slope to draw this line and then of course we found the variance which is represented by these two lines and it turns out to be 3.7 uh, 3.65 db the variance if the points are away from if we have more points away from uh, the curve then we expect the variance to be more and if the points are closer the variance would be less okay so you should be able to substitute yourself and get this number which we are going to do in the in the following exercise that's the linear scale though this is the log scale distance and that's the linear scale now for you to practice to make sure that you can get the numbers we have seen these numbers before find the shadowing variance around the path loss assume a carrier frequency of uh, 2 gigahertz now to make your life easier you can find these values you can find k and gamma but just to uh, for for you to uh, to make your life easier we are giving you k you can double check them by fitting a line to this point and then is your job is to find the variance i'll not give you the variance what the variance is but you can write your answer in the comment section and with more comments we will be able to check uh, from other comments whether you get the same answer or different so write your answer expect others to write their answers and then you can cross check and validate your answer thank you very much and the coming videos will talk more about uh, modeling ray tracing and also other uh, issues related to link budget thank you for being good listeners